Hi, I would like to tell you about Plinker, an R package to work with Plink from R. And the first thing I'm going to do, the first thing I did, is to go to the Plink website and take a look at what is the first example. So here you tell, so it's called running Plink, it's the first page. And uh, this is how to run Plink without any things, that this will not work. And now they discuss about the version, which is irrelevant for this example but here they have the first run so let's take a let's take a look so you use plink on some kind of file with some data uh, using some kind of phenotype uh, for some association so this is what we'll be doing actually there will be a, an association between a quantitative trait in the phenotype uh, minor allele frequency of 0.05 and will be saved to a certain file so this you can do with Plinker. And I will show you how it's done. It's not the most convenient way in Plinker to do a quantitative trait analysis, but I'll walk you through it anyway, so that you can see how it's done uh, more elegantly within Plinker. For that, we have a vignette. It's called basic usage. And then, um, well, of course, Plink needs to be installed. So Plinker can install uh, Plink versions 1.7 and version 1.9. They can coexist, so you can actually call both of them and work both with them, with both of them. So that's great. So it detects if Plink is installed, if not. So uh, with this function, you can install a Plink version. You also have the function install Plinks, which install, installs all versions of Plink that are supported. So this is the line of code uh, that we that I just showed you. And um, the first thing we'll be covering, so we're going in th through this in steps. First we cover this part, then we have the two data files. And then we need to create this phenotype files. It's not supplied by Plink itself, so we have to make it ourselves. Uh, luckily I've put an example for of, of such a file in Plinker. Um, well, we're going to uh, and, th and then we have all we need, we are going to specify an output file. And then we have all the commands we need to run Plink. So if we have all the files, we can pl call Plink exactly like this. And we'll have our result and will also be shown. So let's make this first thing. F dash dash file, my data. It means that it will look for two files. MyData.pad and MyData.map. Uh, pad means pedigree, map means a genotype map. So um, luckily, um, the Plink, su Plink supplies both of them. So you can get the Plink example files from Plink 1.7. 1.7 has the more interesting one. 1.9 also has an, 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 um, a toy pad file. It's actually called toy.pad. But in 1.7, it's called test.pad. And also there's a map file uh, in Plink 1.7 called test.map. Also in 1.9. Uh, it's available, it's called toy.map, but it's less interesting than this one. Um, and um, so, all right, so, so we have these file names available, and Plink needs to know uh, not the path to the pet file, nor the path to the map file. It needs to know the path to either of those two without the extension. Well, because those two files are in the same folder, if I remove the extension, uh, because they're both called test, uh, it will be the same. Uh, so we can just use either of those two files uh, paths without extensions. So nice. So now we can call plink dash file my data uh, on files that are already there. So that's an easy one. Next step will be to create uh, or obtain the phenotype file. So um, actually it's already there, the phenotype file. It's uh, within Plinker, so Plinker supplies some files itself. So with get Plinker file name of a file called pheno raw, like I really wanted to have the same name as the example, uh, you can get the path to the file name. Um, the output file name is easy. We just need to specify um, the, 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 well, the output file name. Uh, which is uh, very simple. We're going to use a temporary file, uh, which in the end will be a folder, um, with run one added to it. So it will write to a temporary location, and uh, that will create a file run one. But this run one is used as a base uh, to start creating files. 
So the actual file that will be created is that base thing with the extension .qsoc, which means it will be a file coming out of a quantitative uh, association. So with all the files in place, we can now actually run Plink, and it is very straightforward. You will just call the function run Plink with the arguments you need. So this is dash file my data, so my data prepared at above, dash dash pheno with the phenotype file name, to an association minor allele frequency of 0.05, and the output file name there. So then in the back, Plink by default uh, version 1.9 is called, here we can see its output. We're not interested in that uh, yet. Now we're going to take a look what we actually did. So the first file we used was the pad file, which contains the pedigree. And actually I'm just going to show it here. So here we see the pad file that is supplied with Plink 1.7. Um, so a family ID, a within family ID. So these are six families, six individuals, each one unique to his or her family. Um, so they're all unrelated. There's a father and a mother, we, th that's not used. There's a sex code, I think uh, male is one, female is two. And uh, these are their um, uh, genotypes for the different SNPs. So there are two, two SNPs. Uh, humans are diploid, I think they use humans here. So this is homo G, um, homozygous A, uh, this individual, individual one. Um, whereas for the second SNP, they're all heterozygous. Oh no, here's the uh, homozygous one for T. Um, note that I did add the descriptions of the columns. So uh, because uh, Blink doesn't uh, do that, so I added it for uh, mostly myself, so I can read things. So now we've taken a look at the pad file. It's logical that we're going to take a look at the map file. So the map file contains the genotypic mapping, which uh, looks like this. So we have two SNPs both on a uh, first chromosome at the base pairs one and two and at the position in centimorgans of uh, zero which means that it's ignored um, so also uh, a regular plink map file doesn't have these column descriptions i've added them uh, for readability but i just really read that um, that map file and uh, when displaying when reading it i'll add this extra information which is it makes it so much more easy to read. Um, all right, so the phenotype file, let's go through that one now. So the phenotype file needs to be like this. Uh, so it needs to have a family ID and a within family ID. So these are the six individuals we already seen. So it's family ID one to six, uh, within family ID one, one, one. That's exactly the same as these two columns. Um, and here are the phenotypes for the first trait. So you can have multiple traits. Um, so here they have a phenotype for the first trait. Note that these phenotypic values, you can also find them here if you look well. Um, these are actually ignored. Um, so, so you can ignore it. Uh, I always supply a phenotype file like this and it will always be used. And this column will always be ignored within Plinker. Uh, because this scales up way more better to put all the phenotypes in uh, in one table. Uh, it's, it's reasonable to put all the phenotypes in a phenotype file. So let's take a look at the output uh, that Plink gave. Uh, so it, this is the association file, so it created a QSO file. Uh, this is how it looks like. It's a table. Uh, so these are the SNPs at chromosome 1, at base pair 1 and 2. This is the number of non-missing genotypes. Uh, and then we can see it mostly, so I think the most important one is the regression error squared. So that means how much it can uh, attribute of the phenotypes to the genotype. So apparently SNP1 is better associatable uh, with the phenotype uh, than SNP2. So this was just a basic example um, to use the first line that you can find on the Plink website within Plinker. Um, I'm looking for users, so you're always welcome to, um, to help out. Um, I wish you a very good day. Bye.